Hello everyone, welcome to Integrated Medical Biochemistry with Dr. Bijoya. Today I shall tell you about specimen quality. So specimen quality uh, lets us ask a few questions. For example, is the specimen tube filled to the correct level of an anticoagulant? Is the centrifugation time and speed appropriate? Is the specimen clotted? lipemic, icteric or hemolyzed and will any of these above conditions of the specimen affect the results of the patient and are any of these above condition cause of specimen rejection. So these are the few points that determine the specimen quality of any patient uh, when it is collected and sent to the laboratory for analysis. So let us look at the factors affecting the specimen quality. Uh, the first one is various anticoagulants and their ratio. Now the first, uh, uh, these are various anticoagulants and uh, their ratios are mentioned here. For example, EDTA, uh, which has to be taken 1.2 to 2 milligrams per ml of blood. And if this ratio is not mentioned, maintained then the uh, blood components will be affected there may be hemolysis and uh, they may also interfere while carrying out the analysis similarly citrate uh, ratio is also mentioned here uh, that for most of the parameters 3.2 to 3.8 gram per deciliter is needed but for uh, prothrombin time and for ESR the uh, sodium citrate ratios are different. Now, in case of heparin, it is uh, 0.2 milligram per ml of blood in each tube uh, or uh, 12 to 30 IU per ml of unfractionated sodium, lithium or ammonium salt of heparin is taken. Uh, in potassium oxalate, 1 to 2 milligram per ml of uh, 1 to 2 milligram per ml uh, ratio is used whereas for sodium fluoride also uh, up to 2 milligram per ml of sodium fluoride uh, is used. So these are the ratios that have to be maintained at any cost uh, and de depending upon the size of the vacuity these uh, the same amount of blood has to be collected. If the amount of blood collected is less or more compared to the anticoagulant present inside the vacuity, it is going to hamper the quality of the uh, plasma or serum. Now, the second uh, factor that influences the quality of uh, sample is the centrifugation speed and time. So, uh, in case of plasma, the centrifugal speed should be uh, uh, 200 to 300 G and it should be centrifuged for at least 15 minutes so that a cell-free plasma is obtained. And in case of serum, uh, when the plasma coagulation is complete, only then the centrifugation should be done and the centrifugation uh, should be done at least for 10 minutes and at a minimum speed of 1500 G. So normally what happens when there is a additional load in the laboratory uh, many times the time factor is deducted like if uh, minimum 15 minutes of centrifugation is needed um, it may be modified to lesser time period so that the samples may be processed fast but this always hampers the quality of the sample. Now, when the, when the serum is being separated or the plasma is being separated, the temperature of the room should not drop below 15 degrees Celsius or it should not exceed the 25 degrees Celsius. So, the room temperature has to be ambient and it should be maintained. Now, uh, the specimen quality. Uh, so these are the different things that we obtained after centrifugation. This is a normal plasma. Uh, this is an icteric serum, this is hemolyzed and this is a lipemic plasma or serum sample. So uh, the first one is the most appropriate, appropriate sample and the remaining three 
can uh, will have some impact on the quality of the uh, sample de depending upon the degree of icterus hemolysis or lipemia so this uh, or turbidity this we will see in the uh, forthcoming slide now in hemolyzed sample the hemolysis is caused due to rupture of rbcs which may be due to inappropriate ratio of anticoagulant to blood or it may be due to uh, inappropriate sample collection uh, so the cellular contents of the rbc is um, now outside and it mixes with the serum and there is also increased in um, turbidity of the serum specimen. Uh, now this is the scaling of uh, um, hemolysis so you can see that the scaling depends on amount of hemoglobin uh, so uh, it falls between normal serum that is hemolysis less than hemoglobin less than 0.25 grams per liter insignificant hemolysis where hemoglobin is 0.25 to 5 grams per uh, liter mild hemolysis uh, 0.5 to 3 grams per liter moderate hemolysis 0 0.3 to 5 grams per liter and gross hemolysis which is more than 5 grams per liter so depending on the degree of hemolysis the turbidity will increase and it will uh, interfere with the analysis of some analytes so rbc cellular ions and enzymes will also increase and this will falsely elevate certain parameters such as potassium and enzymes like uh, alt ast and others now what is the mechanism of interference by hemolysis we know that there are different grades of uh, hemolysis now let us see how the hemolysis interferes so hemolysis wherever it occurs whether it is in vivo or in vitro certain results may decrease or increase now the mechanism uh, contributing to these effects are rise in intracellular constituents in the extracellular space or the plasma interference with analytical procedures and optical interference by hemoglobin now next is the lipemic serum sample so what is lipemic serum sample it is a cause due to lipemia and lipemia is turbidity of the serum specimen due to presence of lipoproteins or chylomicrons now uh, the excessive lipids will cause elevated triglyceride values and it will also interfere with various other parameters uh, once again here also the scaling or the degree of li uh, lipemia is given now in this blue sheet if we draw a black line it may the visibility of the line will change and uh, there are also grades for example uh, negative indicates uh, no, no lipemia or uh, uh, plus indicates as insignificant lipemia uh, two pluses indicate mild lipemia whereas three uh, and four pluses indicate moderate and gross lipemia and the values of triglycerides are mentioned over here so it falls between 125 to 1000 milligrams per deciliter now the causes of lipemia most often the lipemia results due to increased triglyceride concentration in the plasma or serum and this increased uh, triglyceride may be due to immediate food intake and sample collection that is the time span between food intake and time uh, of collection is not appropriate so the uh, serum is still not clear of the lipids or it may be due to altered lipid metabolism or it may be due to infusion of lipids after intestinal absorption the triglycerides remain in the plasma as chylomicrons and their metabolites for 6 to 12 hours so the ideal time of collecting uh, sample will be after 12 hours of fasting uh, only then the parameters uh, only then the turbidity will have reduced and 
Now the mechanism of interference by lipemia, it can be uh, due to in, uh, interference in spectrophotometric analysis because it will lead to light scattering. The result can either increase or reduce depending on blanking procedure and at high turbidity no measurement may be possible due to limits of linearity of the method. The second is volume depletion effect where the increased amount of lipoprotein will decrease the amount of water in the sample. So all the analytes that are water soluble will also decrease in proportion. So this explains low sodium and potassium concentrations that are found in lipemic sera when measured by ISE or flame photometry. ISE here stands for ion selective electrode. The interference by physicochemical mechanism is also observed in lipemia. The electrophoretic and chromatographic procedures are affected due to high amount of lipoproteins present. Now the third factor is the icterus. So what is icterus? Icterus is excessive caused by excessive uh, bilirubin which causes discoloration of the serum or plasma and this excessive bilirubin will interfere at certain wavelengths and this will also compromise the accuracy of certain analytes. Once again here also the gradation of icterus is mentioned and it is uh, depending upon the uh, increasing amount of bilirubin. So zero indicates uh, normal bilirubin levels uh, 1 plus indicates insignificant icterus, 2 plus indicates mild icterus, 3 pluses and 4 plus indicate moderate and gross icterus. So the mechanism now of bilirubin interference are mainly the chemical mechanism uh, and the spectral uh, interference. So the chemical interference, um, we see that bilirubin interferes with all the oxidase peroxidase based uh, test methods. So bilirubin uh, actually reacts with hydrogen peroxide formed in these oxidase peroxidase method and this causes lower results in enzymatic procedures uh, such as glucose, cholesterol, triglyceride, urate and creatinine. Always a false low value is obtained due to bilirubin reacting with the H2O2. So bilirubin also competitively interferes with dye binding methods uh, which are used to estimate parameters like albumin. Now in spectral interference, bilirubin has a high absorbance between 340 to 500 nanometer wavelength. So all the parameters and procedures which use these wavelengths Bilirubin will in, be an interfering factor because of high background absorbance caused by it. So this is the mechanism of bilirubin interference. Now which parameters are affected? There are uh, various parameters that are sensitive to interference by hemoglobin, bilirubin and um, excessive lipoprotein causing turbidity. These include creatinine, triglyceride, cholesterol, glucose, phosphorus, uric acid, iron, total protein, bilirubin, etc. So all these factors can be affected by the quality of the serum sample or the plasma sample. So please like, share and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Thank you and have a nice day.